Hello everybody, this is Bruce Wagner from The Bitcoin Show, and now in like multiple languages, I don't know, five, seven, nine languages, we keep adding languages all the time. Today I want to talk with you about something that is so, so important. People have lost a lot of money because of this. Password security. Password security is a basic, basic internet skill that I'm shocked at how many people get it wrong, including myself. We're all guilty of this. We're lazy and we can't remember lots of long, complicated passwords. Of course, we're not machines, we're just people. So I'm going to teach you a little trick that we use around Only One TV that's so easy, it's unbelievable. It's actually even easier than remembering a couple different passwords, okay? We use two different tools in combination. Now the reason the password security is such a big, huge issue is because websites are getting hacked into. And it doesn't matter if it's a blog site or a bank or you know, a, a Bitcoin trade site or anything, um, email, they're getting hacked into and they're also uh, doing uh, viruses. They, called, they call them keyboard capture Trojan viruses. Basically, it's a virus that just records absolutely everything you type, even when you're not connected to the internet. And that's a bad thing because it'll, connect, it'll actually capture your login ID and password and send that to the bad guys when next time it is connected to the internet. So these are all dangers. The way you get around it is you have a different password for every website. Let me say that again, a different password for every website. That's really important. Secondly, the password has to be long. It can't be five or six or nine characters long. It has to be 12 or 16 or 30 characters long, okay? And it must not be words. Don't use words like your dog's name, your wife's name, or birth date. Can't be things like that because computers can guess that. Billions of times per second they can guess passwords. So you want a random list of letters, numbers, and symbols, and it has to be long. Well, of course you can't remember that, but a machine can. So I'm gonna show you how we use two tools in combination with each other, and they're free, and it's brilliant, and you'll never forget a password again. It's actually even easier to log on uh, to all the different things that you use in complete security. All right, the two tools are Dropbox, which many people are familiar with, and KeePassX, a free open source password manager that's available for every platform. In fact, both Dropbox and KeePassX are available on all the platforms. Ubuntu Linux for the desktop or the laptop, uh, or Windows or Mac, and also Android for your phone or iPhone. It's available on everything, both of these are. All right, so let's first start with Dropbox. Come over here to Google and type in Dropbox, all one word. And of course, the first thing you'll be taken to is dropbox.com. Click dropbox.com and then you simply, um, it's free. It's absolutely a free service up to two gigabytes. You can pay for more storage if you need it, but you certainly won't need it for this purpose. So this is dropbox.com. You can click here and watch a video that teaches you all about what it is. It's so awesome. I'm gonna click Linux because we use Ubuntu Linux, of course. We're free open source advocates here. And there it is, Dropbox for Linux. Now, of course, we use Ubuntu, and we don't use the 64-bit version. We use the 32-bit version, so that would be the second choice. Ubuntu x86, that just means a normal PC. .dev is, is what you call an installation file in Ubuntu. Uh, of course, you follow the instructions for Windows if you're using Windows, or Mac if you're using Mac. But basically, you just click that file, and it's downloaded the .dev file. All right, so I, in my browser, in the download area, I say open because I've just downloaded this quick little file and it's opening as you can see and in Ubuntu this is what it looks like when you open a .dev an installation uh, package. It says this, and if you wait, wait a couple seconds it loads up. It says Dropbox integration for Nautilus and, and now mine says reinstall because I've already installed it. So um, I'm not gonna, well should I reinstall it? Yeah I'll go ahead and reinstall it, why not? It won't hurt anything. So I just click reinstall and then it's going to ask me my password. Now it's installing. In your case, it will say install if it's the first time. Now it says installing. It'll say installing for a few moments. And it pops up with this screen. Uh, Nautilus restart required, of course. That's Nautilus is the name for the file manager in Ubuntu Linux. It's basically just your simple file manager that's built into the operating system. So I clicked Restart Nautilus, and then I click Close, and we're finished. So I'll just close this, the Ubuntu Software Center, and we're, we're finished. Now I'll go up to Applications, 
and then um, it's under accessories I believe or no internet and then select Dropbox launch Dropbox and when I launch Dropbox it will um, it'll pop up and ask me if I already have an account or if I want to create a new account I already have an account and I've already synced it so it's already in the process of uh, synchronizing all my files it says I have uh, 89% of my 10.2 gigabytes used and it's downloading one file so it's still in the process of syncing but anyway basically that's how it works when I go to in Ubuntu it's places uh, on Windows it would be your documents uh, and Mac, you know, Mac, it's whatever it is, your home folder basically. When I go to my home folder, I will see a Dropbox folder as you can see right here. So, and you see the blue, uh, like it looks like a recycle symbol. That means it's in the process of synchronizing. So I go into my Dropbox and I go into public. I keep everything in public on Dropbox because that way I can uh, use a, a link that I can share with people. And then I have, th I have it separated things I downloaded and things I created. Um, because things that are downloaded can, can be deleted, but things I created are not. And now, um, uh, this is what my Dropbox looks like. Now I have a folder, as you can see right here, called um, KeePass X Files. So I'll open that, and you'll see there are a couple KeePass X Files here. All right, so we'll come back to that in a minute. And the check mark just means it's already synced, which means it's backed up to my computer here and the Dropbox cloud server out there on dropbox.com. And it's also on my laptop, my other computer, all my computers. There's, it's synced with everything. So there's a backup everywhere, even my phone. I have a copy of that. All right, so let's come back to that in a second. Let's go over here and, and find KeePass. KeePass is spelled K-E-E-P-A-S-S-X. A little bit of a weird spelling, but it's K-E-E-P-A-S-S-X, -S -S all one word, on Google. Hit enter and you'll see the, the site is keepassx.org. So you go to keepassx.org and you can uh, click downloads and download it there. And you'll see here they have Mac OS X 10.4 to 10.6. They've got Windows for Windows 2000 XP Vista and 7. And, um, and all that. Of course, on Ubuntu, we don't have to do that. We just go to the Ubuntu Software Center, which is a lot easier. And the software will always be automatically kept up to date. So um, as you can see, we go to the Ubuntu Software Center and type in KeePassX here. Only Windows and Mac users have to use the old-fashioned system. So uh, KeePassX is here. We click Install. And it will probably ask me for my password, of course, to make sure that it's authorized. Okay, and you see this little bar here. It's um, actually installing. One in progress, installing. It'll take just a moment. And when it's finished, it, it's just finished. It says remove. So we know it's done. It's already got a check mark. It's installed. We close the Ubuntu Software Center, and we're good to go. Now, um, I'll just go up here on Ubuntu. It's under Applications. Uh, accessories, applications, accessories. You see, there's the little green keys crossed. Keepass X. I'm going to actually right click and do Add Launcher to Panel, and that just puts a little launcher on my top panel. So I'm going to click um, the Keepass X icon to launch the program now. Again, Keepass X is another free open source application, so it doesn't cost anything and it's available for every platform. So I'll bring it down here so you can see it. This is Keepass X Password Manager. Now, what I want to do is um, file new. I'm going to create a new database and I'm going to give it a password. Now this password has to be long enough and secure enough but it has to be one that you're going to remember because this is the one and only password you will ever have to remember in your life. But it has to be one you remember so make sure you get it right. And it should be, you know, long enough and um, that nobody can guess it. All right. So and then you want to repeat it because once again, you forget this password, you lose all your passwords. Not a good thing. All right. So now you're in this. This is where you store your passwords. Okay. So um, let's see. The first thing I want to do is I'm going to do file save as. I'm going to save this database as. Now here's the trick. I'm going to tell it where to put it. I'm going to put it inside of my Dropbox. Let's see. Oh, browse other folders is here. And I want to go inside Dropbox folder. 
and then I keep it in Dropbox public created keep SX files okay um, and I will actually uh, I'm gonna actually create this and call it Ed's keep SX master file and so give it a descriptive name Ed's keep SX master file dot KB KDB is the uh, keep SX extension and I just hit save now because I saved it inside the Dropbox folder if I go over here to my KeepSX folders on uh, my drop inside of Bruce Dropbox public created KeepSX files. Now you see Ed's KeepSX master file KDB. It was a blue circle as you saw a second ago. Now it's a green arrow, that a green check mark. That means it's already synced. This file already exists on all the computers and phones that I own. All right, so back here to the database. Um, this is as simple as it is. Now what you can do here is um, you can create groups like I'll create a new group called uh, banking because this is uh, something that I want you to really get used to understanding uh, you can select any icon that means something to you maybe you'll find something that has a dollar sign I think that the big gold key is good enough alright so banking I click here in the banking group and this little key with an arrow down if you hover over it it says add new entry as you can see that's exactly what I want to do. I want to add a new entry. Because the reason I, I got in here is because I want a more secure password for my new Mt. Gox account I'm going to open. All right? So I want to open a Mt. Gox account. So I'm going to put in Mt. Gox. And then I'm going to actually create um, a Mt. Gox account for, for, for Ed, right? So I'm going to say Edward. Let's see. Maybe I'll just say Edgel. Okay, and I'm going to make the username Edgel. All right, so I'm going to click over here to my um, Mount Gox. This is obviously Mount Gox, and I'm going to click Sign Up. You all know how to do that. And once I click Sign Up, it will ask me for a username. Okay, so I'm going to use this this username Edgel. Hopefully, it's available. All right, now it wants a password. So here's where the password manager comes in. Oh, well, first it wants a username on, on this. I mean, sorry, URL. URL just means web address. So I'm, I'm simply going to copy the web address from Mt. Gox. And this is not required, but it's just for convenience. I just go ahead and put Mt. Gox's um, URL in there so that later I can just click here, click here, click here. It's really, really fast, you'll see. So now on the password, I'm not going to create one. I'm not going to put a password in here. I'm going to generate one. So there's this button here called Gen. So you click Gen as in Generate. Now it automatically defaults to a, a very, very good secure password a setup. Uppercase letters means it's going to include capital letters. It's also going to include lowercase letters and numbers and special characters. And it's going to be at least 25 in length, which means it's 164 bits. It's super high quality, strong password. So if you just leave it at the default, you're going to be great. And you don't have to do anything here except click generate. So you click generate and it put one in here. It picked a random password that includes all of those characteristics. So you just hit generate, then you hit OK, and it put the password in for you. And that's all you do. Now you can put comments here and say um, Ed's Bitcoin, um, you know, what, um, uh, exchange account whatever you want that's just optional you click OK and now you see that that it's here you can actually see the entry now if you want to know what the password is you can actually go up here to the view menu and it's got hide usernames hide passwords you can unhide the password and the next time I click on that you'll see the password shows up right here and that's the password do you see how complex that is it's amazing so get a load of this password. It's eight, It's all lowercase here. H D K G capital X comma capital K at sign tilde equals capital D four capital P backward apostrophe three four equals left bracket and so on. What an amazingly complex complex password. This password is going to be so secure no computer will ever be able to guess it in many lifetimes. Now, here's where the fun comes in. You click on the entry here, and by the way, you can you can turn hide passwords on again, so people looking over your shoulders are never going to see your passwords or your usernames. But these two buttons are your friends right here. This little guy with the red tie, the blue shirt, blue shirt and red tie, looks like Donald Trump uh, without the comb over. That's your username. 
The one next to it with the key on the piece of paper, that's your password. And all you do is click this to copy the username to the clipboard and type that in when you go to log in. Click this to copy the password to the clipboard. So what I want to do, I'm creating a new account. If you may remember, I was in the middle of creating a new account right here and it wants to know what's my password. So I just Alt-Tab over here. I click Copy Password to Clipboard, Alt-Tab again, hold down Alt and press Tab, or on Apple it's Command, hold down Command and press Tab, and then Control-V on Windows or Ubuntu Linux or Command-V on Apple. And then uh, I put in those that, that really complex password, right? Now the email address, um, I'll go, um, I'll put in an email address that's for this purpose only. Okay, now I hit register and hopefully it worked. Your registration has been received and an email has been sent. Please input the code here. All right, so, and then, oh, by the way, this is an important thing. On your browser, this is, I'm using Chromium, the free open source version, this completely free open source version of Chrome called Chromium. But whatever browser you have, you're probably gonna get a password thing like this. Save the password or never for this site. Now your first inclination might be save this password because I don't wanna be bothered with passwords again. Don't do that. Do this, never for this site. You don't want your browser saving your password because your password is so easily recovered right here whenever you need it. There's, you don't want anybody sitting down at this computer to have your password, especially not for your email or your banking or your Bitcoin accounts. I mean, we're not talking about email and documents anymore. We're talking about money, real money here. So um, make sure that you tell the browser not to receive, I mean, not to record your passwords. Okay, next. And so we got this confirmation code in our Gmail account, our email account there. I typed it in uh, and it says, please provide those information to confirm your account. Unique ID, confirmation code, confirm. Let's see if it worked. Your account's now enabled, start trading. So, yep, looks like I'm online. All right, so now I have set up my Mt. Gox account and my passwords are here. Also, this you see this little third icon over here on um, Again, if you Alt-Tab and go back to your KeePassX app, there's an icon over here. The third one here is Save. You want to always make sure that you save it. Um, if it's blue, it needs Save. That means um, that there's something you've changed that you need to save. And gray is means there's nothing to save. It's already saved. Now, uh, one of the most important things about KeePassX in uh, Ed and I's opinion is this. If you go to Extras Menu Settings, there's under Extras Menu Settings, you'll get up Settings here. And then there's a tab here called Security. And we think that it's important to check mark this box here at the bottom. Lock database after inactivity of a certain number of seconds. So if you say, what is 1200 seconds? Um, whatever that is, uh, a certain <laughs> 10, 15 minutes or something like that. You can do the math. Anyway, we put in say 1200 seconds or 1500 seconds and hit apply and hit okay. What that will do is the same thing as this orange icon up here. Like a screensaver, after 10 or 15 minutes of inactivity, it'll automatically do the same thing as that icon. It'll lock it. So your KeePassX program is still open, but it's locked. So if you walk away, you go to lunch and you forgot, don't worry, this will automatically lock in just a few minutes. And it's still open and you can still unlock it. You just have to use your master password, the one password you can't forget to open it again. And all your passwords are in here. Okay. So there you have it. There's, there's my uh, Mt. Gox Ed Gell account. There's my username and password and so on. Well, I also wanted to go over here and create an account on Trade Hill. Okay, so all I do is click sign up, obviously. This is the same for every blog. I'm, I'm serious. Every single thing you use, whether it's a commenting on a blog post, whatever it is you need to create an account for, use this. Not just your secure things, put everything in here because if you use the same password on multiple different blogs and forums and one of them gets hacked, now they've got all of them. What a nightmare. When someone steals your identity, it's just not fun. This is much easier and better. Okay, so again, they want uh, an email address. So we're going to give out Ed's spam email address. Okay, now that's the, basically the email address on Trade Hill is acting as your login ID. So I copied that. I did a control A, control C, copied it. Now over here uh, in KeepSX, I alt tab back to KeepSX, I'm going to click the green down arrow thing, add a new entry, right? And I'm going to call it Trade Hill. I call it Trade Hill slash 
Ed Gell, so that I remember, um, uh, you know, that, that it's for Ed Gell. All right, and then the URL is, I just Alt-Tab back over here. I'm just going to copy the first part of the Trade Hill URL so that I know the website that I'm dealing with. You know, in the future, you'll be surprised how many websites you go to, thousands of them, and you'll forget what's what. Hit the Gen button, which means Generate. Hit the Generate button again. Hit OK, and guess what? You're done. Just click OK, and you're all done. It's right there. Now remember, the diskette is blue again, so make sure you hit that. It'll ask you if you try to close it later without saving, but just hit it all the time. Hit Save. Actually, there's a setting here under Extra Settings. Isn't there a, a, uh, a setting here for automatically save? Automatically save database on exiting and locking. Uh, oh, automatically save database after every change. That's the one I like. Settings, go to General 2, automatically save database after every change. There you go. Apply, OK. So that's another important thing. So that every time I make a change, boom, it's automatically saved. And remember, when it's automatically saved, it's automatically put out here on your Dropbox and it's everywhere. You just don't have to make it automatic. That's what computers are for. OK, so back here to Trade Hill. Um, and if you want to see what your password is, you can for a minute you can unhide your password and you see uh, when I click back on Trade Hill, look at that, this big, long, secure password with letters, capital letters, small letters, symbols and numbers and everything is there. I'm going to hide passwords again, just visually so that people can't look over my shoulder. But that's it, Trade Hill. So back on Trade Hill, it's wanting my password. So I, again, click on Trade Hill, click on the golden key on the piece of paper, Alt-Tab, uh, Control-V to paste that password in and control V to confirm it again. Now, uh, must contain at least one number, one uppercase letter, and one lowercase letter. So obviously, we're good with that. Referral code, make sure you use our referral co code for the Bitcoin show, TH-R141. TH, capitals, uh, capital letters, TH as in Trade Hill, dash R, like Robert, or referral, 141. All right, now we'll click register. And that's it, your account is now active again. Uh, the Chromium, the browser is asking, do you want to save this password in the browser? Never. Never save the password in the browser. It's much more secure if you don't save your, your passwords in your browser ever. You don't need to save your passwords in your browser anymore because you've got them all here. So that's it. Your account's now active. Log in. So it's wanting me to log in. Now, every time you go to these sites, you're going to have to log in, of course. But all you have to do is Alt-Tab, go here, click the little guy with the red tie, right? and then control V paste it and then go back alt tab again click the little golden key alt tab control V to paste it in and then you've got the captcha until you turn that up off I, uh, I think Trade Hill has an option to turn that off now but for the moment it's on so I just you know literally you just paste it in and as you see I'm logged in that's how easy it is and I didn't have to remember any of these crazy passwords but it's unique and it's secure now remember that you can set up what I do is I set up a new group for forums you know uh, with uh, some sort of uh, a symbol that means something to you I set up a new group for um, what blogs you know what are the other things that you you do online. Um, I think one of these buttons is add a new group. No, but anyway, add a new group here. Uh, forums, blogs, banks, um, like Gmail. All your Gmail accounts. You want to have them all grouped together under something that you know means some symbol that means something to you. Um, but anyway, you can you get the idea. Internet is just anything generic. Email, whatever. Banking forums, blogs, Gmail accounts, Twitter accounts, Skype accounts, and so on, so on, so on. I have them all grouped like that. And if I ever forget, like, where is it? What group it is? I'm looking for Trade Hill. I just type in Trade Hill in the search box, and of course, it comes right back up. It's like, oh, of course, it's under banking. So that's it. That's how simple it is. It's saved. It's on your Dropbox. It's on every, um, every device, everywhere you are. So remember, every time you visit a website to create a new account, or every time you have to log in to an existing account that you're using, make sure you just go ahead and change your password. Just change it. Change your password, enter it into this X, and give it a long, secure password, and you don't have to worry about it ever again. Okay, now what I want to show you, I'm going to close X completely, and I want to show you how to get to it in the future. So. Um, 
when you go to a new computer, like another computer that you use or another phone or whatever, you go into your Dropbox folder the way you normally would, and I keep it under Dropbox Public Created KeePassX Files. This is just how I organize mine. And I want to open that Ed's KeePass Master uh, file. I just double click that. When you double click that, and you already have the program installed, it'll just launch that database. Because remember, if you're in somebody else's, it's going to require somebody else's password and it's going to have somebody else's uh, database of passwords in it. So you want your own. So that's how you do it. And then once it's there, it's there. You can keep it lo you know, loaded. If you walk away, it'll automatically lock like that and so on. Close the app and it's done. This file, by the way, is totally encrypted so that nobody can hack into this file and get all of your passwords. Even if they get this file, it's useless to anyone else. The other thing is, once I've, if I use this, like if Ed is using this computer all the time, and that's the last file opened, he doesn't have to go through that structure. All he has to do is click the launcher for KeePass X, and it will automatically remember the last database that was open. He just puts in his password, and that's his database, the last one that was open. And as you can see, those are the accounts that are already there. So that's basically all there is. That's all there is to it. Just make sure that you always keep a secure password for every website you go to, especially your banking and your Bitcoin sites. Don't forget, Bitcoin is not just a play toy. Bitcoin is money. Bitcoin is more important than US dollars, in many people's opinions. So make sure that you secure every website you go to with a unique, long, strong password. And please don't, don't be sorry. All right? Thanks, and make sure you watch The Bitcoin Show in many, many multiple languages now on OnlyOneTV.com. All spelled out, O-N-L-Y-O-N-E-T-V.com, The Bitcoin Show. This is Bruce Wagner. Thank you. Go Bitcoin.